Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to show you my part two of the comprehensive reading order of Fantastic Four in collected editions format. I'm mainly going to talk about trade paperbacks and of course the standard hardcovers that have been released for Fantastic Four. I don't own any of the masterworks but I will talk about where those take you. I will also talk about where these trade paperbacks fit in in the reading order if you have the omnis and oversized hardcovers that I did in part one of this video series. And also what the alternatives are to these omnis and oversized hardcover in a cheaper format. And I will also talk about some of the upcoming trade paperbacks that are coming out that I'm pretty excited about. So join me for part two. Okay, so really quick before we talk about the next trade paperback in the reading order after Omnibus Volumes two and three. I was asked by a viewer what a cheaper route would be to get this omnibus because these omnis are kind of expensive. They're 100 to 125 dollars each. Marvel has released these amazing epic trade paperbacks and normally I would say that is the cheaper route. However, volume one and three are out of print of these epics. They go for just as much as an omnibus. So let me tell you what those collect. Epic number one collects Fantastic Four number one through 18 and that one's out of print. Epic volume two collects Fantastic Four 19 through 32 and annuals one through two. So already further than the first omnibus. So they don't map out with these omnis in mind. Epic volume three collects Fantastic Four 33 to 51 and annual number three also out of print. So where does that leave us? Let's get started. We're gonna talk about the very next book. And like I said, I'm not gonna talk about Marvel Masterworks, but I will tell you where those end up if you are getting those. And this is George Perez's Fantastic Four Visionaries. So open this up and see what it collects. Let me show you some of the early George Perez artwork. Now this is one I typically don't get because this kind of jumps all over the place, but it does take place a few years after that third omnibus. And this collects Fantastic Four 164 to 167, issue 170, and then 176 through 178, issues 184 through 186, and that's it. So as you can see, it skips some issues. However, there was a trade paperback released, I think in 2014, that was called Crusaders and Titans. That one collects issues 164 to 176. A more comprehensive collection, but I already got this, and I'm hoping that they'll release it in an epic format. If not, we'll get some kind of omnibus eventually, but here's hoping to that. Here's a little bit more of that artwork before we talk about Visionary Volume 2. And again, this is all George Perez, and I guess they just wanted to make it artist-centric. That's why they skipped a bunch of issues. Here is Volume 2. Yeah, the Visionary line was pretty interesting. It, they did a Peter David stuff on Hulk, and then they also did the Fantastic Four Visionary by John Byrne, which is how I used to own them before these Omnis came out. So this Visionary Volume 2 collects Fantastic Four 187 through 188, 191 through 192, Annuals 14 through 15, Marvel 2 and 1 number 60, and material from The Adventures of the Thing number 3. So again, kind of all over the place, hoping to replace these with eventual epics or some other kind of book eventually in the future. Hope Marvel keeps going and cranking those omnis out though. Next up, we have one of those Marvel premiere hardcovers. These are kind of a failed line. They no longer are available anymore. They used to have two covers of each Marvel premiere hardcover. This is the Overthrow of Doom, collecting issues 192 and all the way up to 200. So again, just cheaper hardcovers, not Marvel Masterworks stuff. Most of the art in here is done by Keith Pollard and George Perez. Not sure why they discontinued the Visionaries George Perez Volume 3. I think there was a solicit for that at one time. And let's move on to the next volume. So we skip some issues and we go on to In Search of Galactus. We start off with issue 204 here, and this takes us all the way up until issue 214. It's about 10, 11 issues, much like the previous Marvel premiere. And this has mainly artwork by Keith Pollard, Sal Buscema, and John Byrne. That's right, this takes place before the John Byrne Omnis. There's a little more, ah, there's a face that most people hate. Herbie the Robot from the cartoon, eventually, he joined the Fantastic Four. Most people didn't like who he replaced. Terax. Yeah, some pretty good issues here. Most of this stuff, if I'm not mistaken, is written by the legendary Marf Wolfman. And all those trades take place right between Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 3 and Fantastic Four by John Byrne Omnibus Volume 1. Now here's the very first epic I own in the Fantastic Four line because I don't have the early epics because I have the Omnis. 
and I don't want to double dip. Uh, this is volume 17, but what's cool about these is on the spine, they don't have a number, right? So if you can see, they just line up and they have the title. So this one's all in the family. And the way you can tell where it belongs is because of these numbers right there. So that's volume 17. Again, these are also not released in chronological order. Just because we got a volume one doesn't mean two and three followed right afterwards. No, they jumped around. We still don't have a volume 18, for example. But anyway, uh, volume 17 collects issues of Fantastic Four 296 through 307. So this literally is right after the John Byrne Omnibus Volume 2. And Fantastic Four Annual Number 20 and Fantastic Four versus the X-Men 1 through 4, which is one of my favorite stories written by Chris Claremont. And this has a lot of famous writers in here. Roger Stern, Stan Lee, Englehart, Steve Englehart. Some really good artwork too by John Buscema, John Bognovo, Boganove. Oh my God, I'm so butchering that guy's name. Kerry Gamble, Ron Friends, and Mark Sylvester even jumps in here and does an issue or two. Now there is a volume that has been solicited, volume 18, The More Things Change. Uh, before I talk about this volume here, that particular volume has Fantastic Four 308 through 320, Annual 21, Incredible Hulk 350, and then the Marvel graphic novel Hulk thing, The Big Change. Now this has some amazing writing and art by Walter Simonson, because this kicks off the Walter Simonson years. One that I wish they would do an omnibus of. I really love the beginning of his run, the middle of his run, and the badass end of his run, which is collected in the next epic. This epic, Into the Time Stream, collects issues 334 to 346, annual 23, uh, some material from New Mutants Annual Number 6, X-Factor Annual Number 5, and X-Men Annual Number 14. And of course, that is the Days of Future Present crossover. And I collect that in the oversized hardcover, if you saw my X-Men Comprehensive Reading Order. There's that badass Ahab when everybody thought he was supposed to be Cable. Some gorgeous artwork by Arthur Adams. Um, also, Mark Silvestri and Ron Friends. Who else is in here? Walter Simonson already said that. And... Let's move on to the next volume. And here we go with Epic Collection Volume 21, also called The New Fantastic Four, because that is probably the highlight of this, is the end of Walter Simonson's run with beautiful, wonderful artwork by Arthur Adams, where the Fantastic Four are kidnapped or thought dead. So Sue Storm builds a new team of Fantastic Four with the Hulk, who is Smart Hulk at the time, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, and Spider-Man. And this is such a badass fight against the Skrulls. Uh, but the rest of this collects a lot of cool issues too. So this collects issues 347 to 361, annual 24, and then some material from the Marvel Holiday Special. I can't say enough about these epics. If I can't get these books in omnibus format, then the epic format is the way I'd go because they collect just about everything, with the exception of things like letter pages, which I enjoy, but not every omnibus collects letter pages. But let me show you some of the extras that they do have in the back. Uh, while I flip through here. Yeah, here's the holiday special, also drawn by the wonderful Arthur Adams. And sometimes they have, like, interviews and things like that, or unused pages. Oh, yes, I love when they do this, the rendition of different trade paperback covers that they've done in the past, afterwards, from the Marvel Masterworks line. And, yeah, here we go, here's sketches. So to me, these are completely worth it. Anywhere from $35 to $40 is the retail price for these. Now we take a break, because I go back to this old trade paperback that I still refuse to give up. Uh, this collects issues 387 to 392. This is the Nobody Gets Out Alive storyline, which is, to me, one of the best storylines that Tom DeFalco and Paul Ryan worked on. This has not been collected in anything else. I, I expect them to eventually release a epic format of these stories because I think they want to do an epic format all the way up until prior to I believe at one time they said Onslaught but I've seen some epics after Onslaught so I I'm not sure and I'm gonna talk about one from the Fantastic Four but it's not an actual epic so yeah this is Paul Ryan rest in peace the late Paul Ryan I love his artwork and I mean look at that it's great and this is one of those trade paperbacks. It's easy to find. It's cheap. I think I found this for like a dollar or two. But I like to have things on in my bookshelf. So that's why I got this and refuse to give it up. Okay. So the final epic, supposedly, according to Marvel, is this right here. Strange Days. 
This is volume 25 and collects Fantastic Four 403 to 416. Again, lots of artwork by Paul Ryan. St main mainly the stories are by Talon DeFalco. And there's also artwork in here from Carlos Pacheco towards the end when he joined the team, even though they were about to get sold off, which I'll talk about that here in a second. Also, this collects Fantastic Four The Legend, Onslaught Marvel Universe, and then materials from the Tales of the Marvel Universe. So that's everything in here. This is right before the time when the Marvel Universe fought against Onslaught because that was their MacGuffin to get rid of the Fantastic Four and the Avengers so they could be sold off to image creators. Here's that beautiful Carlos Pacheco artwork I was talking about. I, I love his style during these days. So all the characters got traded off to image creators for about a year. Yeah, it lasted 12 issues. And actually, I'll talk about that. Now, there is an omnibus of this coming out. It's called the Heroes Reborn Omnibus that collects Iron Man and Captain America, Fantastic Four, The Avengers 1 through 12. I knew they wouldn't do issues 13 because those cross over with Wildstorm and image characters. So, man, yes. So I think the task was given to Brandon Choi to write the story. And then, of course, the wonderful, talented Jim Lee to draw this. Um, so, yeah, this is just retelling. So, I guess this would be considered a Volume 2 of the Fantastic Four. Volume 1 ended with Issue 416. And here is Volume 2 with gorgeous artwork by Jim Lee at first. And I think Brett Booth ended up finishing out the series. And James Robinson, I think, finished out the writing. But, yeah, there's Brett Booth. And there was this crossover here towards the end before they came back with Heroes Return. Now, there is a Heroes Return Fantastic Four trade paperback that has been announced. That stuff has never been collected in trade paperback or any kind of format. I was hoping for an omnibus head, but hey, whatever. Anyway, so that particular trade is called Fantastic Four Heroes Return, the complete collection. And it collects issues 1 through 15 of, I guess, what is known as Volume 3, the half issue, and then the Fantastic Four Annual 98 and Iron Man 14. That's all stuff that Scott Lobdell, Chris Claremont, and Salvador La Roca did. And here's just a few more pages of this stuff, some of the sketches in the back. But all of this will be available in omnibus format eventually here in a couple of months, I believe, if you want to go that route. And after you get that trade paperback, if you want to go back and find these old things, this is Flesh and Stone collecting volumes three issues 35 through 39 these are co-written by carlos pacheco actually and also his wonderful art look at this this is gorgeous i'm surprised they haven't re-released this uh because he did two runs he did a kind of a big run he also did the the next book here which i'll show you this is the older one this collects issues 40 through 49 and this is into the breach i'm sorry 40 through 45 this one's a little nicer because it's got that glossy paper but also carlos pacheco on art and i think he had a co-writer during this time too but yeah these are just two small trade paperbacks i'm sure these will be eventually released in epic format but if you're impatient like i am you go ahead and get these cheap trade paperbacks from a third party and just a little more of that art before his run is finished up by this point here carlos pacheco still on artwork by the way, this is another one of those Marvel Premiere hardcovers. Uh, this is the Resurrection of Galactus. Spoilers. And this collects issues 46 through 50. So more of Carlos Pacheco, Lionel Francis Yu, and Jeff Loeb is writing or co-plotting and co-writing the story at the time. I'll show more of that artwork here. This also collects Fantastic Four Annual 2000. All the way up until the end of his run. It's Tom Grument on artwork here. Leading up to Fantastic Four, The Inhumans. Collecting the Inhumans miniseries one through four with beautiful, beautiful artwork by Ledron. Now, you might have heard me talk about his artwork from Cable, but by now he is painting his own stuff. This guy is such a beautiful, very reminiscent of a lot of the European comics I have. I'm surprised they did not release this in an oversized hardcover format. And also collects Fantastic Four 51 through 54. Of course, if you notice by now, that leaves a little bit of a gap between this and the Fantastic Four by Mark Wade and Mike Waringo that I did an overview of in the first part. 
So um, hopefully these will eventually be reprinted in Epic or a thicker trade paperback or those complete collections. They keep going with those that are kicking off at the middle of summer this year. All right, let's move on. Immediately after reading this, you move on to the Fantastic Four by Wade and Waringo. Now that's also collected in trade paper bags, of course, and those oversized hardcovers. Now with these, I got these really cheap, so that's why I got like a mixture of hardcovers and trade paper bags and things like that. But this is the beginning of J. Michael Straczynski's run and Mike McCone. Now if you can see here, this is the same size as these, so that's why I didn't include this in an oversized hardcover. Because it is literally just a trade paper bag in a nice format. And you can probably tell it doesn't have a volume, or it has a volume one, but to a new reader, it would be like, okay, where do I start? Volume one? Another volume one? That's why I'm doing these kind of things. Moving on. So this collects issues 527 to 532. And I really love this artwork. Actually, this was a really good run. This gave me hope for the Fantastic Four after Mark Wade left. I was like, oh, good, they got another talented writer. Because I was reading JMS's run. Let's go and talk about the Life Fantastic one. I'll keep going. I was reading his run of Amazing Spider-Man and really dug it. With the exception of Sin's Past. And, of course, One More Day, which was not technically his fault. Now, some of this stuff here. This is the Life Fantastic. Issues 533 to 535. All of that was collected in the Hulk, Planet Hulk Omnibus. So, if you own that, you'll be double dipping by getting this. But this trade paperback also collects the Wedding Special 2005 and the Death in the Family one-shot. All back here. All written by JMS. Which leads us to the next Straczynski issues, which is Civil War. Collecting issues 538 to 543. Now, if you've noticed, they have skipped issues 536 and 537. Those issues are also collected in the Thor by Straczynski omnibus or the trade paperbacks. I really enjoyed this part. I wasn't a big a fan of Civil War at all, but I really enjoy the Fantastic Four aspects of it. I thought they were really good. And that wraps up his run, which leads us to one of my other favorite creators, Dwayne McDuffie and Paul Pelletier. And this is the new Fantastic Four, also available in trade paperback, but I managed to get this really cheap. Collecting Fantastic Fours 544 to 550. Love Paul Pelletier's artwork during the Planet Hulk stuff. And I really enjoyed his stuff here. And I'm, Dwayne McDuffie was one of my favorite writers. Very, very underrated. Wrote my favorite story of Justice League. Which a couple of years ago I did must read Justice League stories. And that was of course the Injustice League story. Miss that guy co-created the milestone universe and then his last project was of course the tower of babel adaptation which was the justice league doom animation so very talented guy died at a young age really sucks and let's see the final issues of him his stuff Dwayne mcduffie stuff the beginning of the end is collected in this little trade paperback more paul pelletier artwork tom grumet took over the run because they told McDuffie that he was off the book. And he, he just barely started. Because they were getting this other writer coming in. One of my least favorite writers. Um, anyway, this collects issues 525 to 526. Now those issues fit in, that's right, right after the Mark Wade and Mike Waringo omnibus. And that first JMS trade paperback. But it also collects issues 551 to 553. So that wraps up his run, sadly. Because the next guy that took over, yep, Mark Miller, one of my least favorite writers, gets to write the world's greatest magazine right after Dwayne McDuffie. No, his run was okay. He didn't even get to finish it because, I don't know, he had moved on to Image by then. So, creator own series or whatever. I'm not really sure. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Mark Miller. I think he's really overrated, but that's just my opinion. But let's get back to what we were talking about. This right here, this collection, World's Greatest collects Fantastic Four 554 to 561 and let's get to the last volume here this right here Master of Doom and as I mentioned Mark Miller didn't even get to finish writing it I think Joe Aherney wrote it Brian Hinch drew most of it actually I think he drew all of it with a little help there towards the end but this collects issues 562 to 569 finishing out that run 
And there was a one time a solicitation for an omnibus of all this stuff. And as much as I hated this run, did I pre-order it? You're goddamn right I pre-ordered it because I'm a damn consumer whore. I, <laughs> I love those stupid omnibus formats. And Brian's Hitch artwork. Yeah, this is the other guy that did that one issue. And Brian Hitch's artwork is actually easy on the eye from time to time. Not so much as writing like he's done on Justice League. Everything I just talked about takes place right between Fantastic Four by Mark Wade Omnibus and Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman Omnibus Volume 1. Then we get, of course, this Matt Fraction Omnibus, which I talked about. And all of these, by the way, with the exception of the John Byrne stuff, is available in easy-to-find trade paperbacks. Right after the Matt Fraction run, we get James Robinson. And I want to say he is probably in my top 10 favorite writers of all time. This is with Leonard Kirk on artwork. And this first volume right here, the Fantastic Four. You saw how they changed the costumes and the font of the title. This volume is called The Fall of the Fantastic Four and collects, I guess, what would be now known as Volume 5 because Volume 4 was by Matt Fraction all the way up to issue 611. These damn renumberings. Anyway, trust me, it, this happens right after the Matt Fraction run, which collects us all the way up to 611. And this restarts the numbering system. So this is now Volume 5 of Fantastic Four. And collects issues one through five. Here we have the very first tie-in to a crossover event, Original Sin. Collecting issues six through ten. By now we've got Leonard Kirk getting help from Carl Kessel. And yes, James Robinson still on writing duties. Then we have Back in Blue. Oh, Tom Grumet helps out in this issue. You know, honestly, I always have a fear of reading a bad... Mark or James Robinson book after uh, Starman because Starman is just one of the greatest comic books of all time and that's why I think James Robinson is one of my favorite writers even though his run on Justice League was not that much beloved but hey you can't win them all but I don't know I'm digging this and I dig this Scarlet Witch but I really like this run um anyway this collects Fantastic Four Annual Number 1 of Volume 5, and then 11 through 14. But not to worry, the series is about to get cancelled. Because we have one more volume right here, The End of Forever. The End is Forever. Omar read pretty one day. And this collects the final issues of James Robinson's run with Leonard Kirk on art. They go back to the original numbering system of 642 to 645, so what would have been 15 is now 642 again. And the Marvel 75th Anniversary Celebration Fantastic Four story. Of course, they canceled this because Marvel was just being a little baby about not owning the rights to the movies. So they went ahead and canceled the greatest magazine of all time. Now, it is back under the hands of Dan Slott and Sarah Pacelli. So that's awesome. And I did want to talk about briefly, just really, really quick while I flip through here. That the Masterworks, the Marvel Masterworks, the ones that I don't collect, have taken us all the way to issue 231 in Annual 15. So before in the past, we had talked about how the Omnis are really based on how much Masterworks stuff we have collected. And I don't know if that's true anymore, honestly. The way these things are mapped out, I don't think that's the way it works. Here's that 75th anniversary magazine. And that's it. And that was part two of my comprehensive reading order of Fantastic Four in collected editions format. If I left anything out, please let me know in the comments down below. If this is your first time watching these videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button if you enjoyed what you saw, even if you didn't, or if you slightly liked it. And leave comments down below about what other series you want to see. I've seen all kinds of things from Batgirl to Captain America to Ghost Rider, and if I have it, believe me, I would love to do it because I enjoy doing these things. I wish they had videos like these when I was starting my collection and collected editions. Don't forget to check out our weekly Old Reader, New Reader segment. It's a live show that happens every Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We'd love for more people to come and join and talk to us about some of these old books because we do have the Fantastic Four Wade and Ringo arc coming up this month in January sometime. So really excited to talk about that. Again, this was Omar, and remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.